Hey, good morning. I'm Jeremy. Why don't you come along and join me on my journey today? And we have a floor. So I've cut my uh, panel for the side with the sliding door on it. And that's what it looks like. I already test fit it, fits good. But I just wanted to show you, this is what I have to do to the back. I want every inch approximately, well, it is every inch, um, not perfectly straight, but um, I did it all by hand uh, instead of using the table saw because I didn't have a straight square edge to use on the table saw, um, just due to the angles on this wall. But anyway, I uh, cut a groove every every inch, and it's... Ooh, it's almost it's about halfway through the board all the way down what that allows it to do allows it to flex much easier when I was doing that with um, the full sheet I needed to get that curve and it just wasn't gonna happen now without very much pressure I can push that right into the uh, right into the frame and then I've got a nice clean piece. So my panel is all nice and in installed now. Um, I have my one inch Velcro. I took the hook part and I stuck it to the edge of all my uh, framing. And then um, I pulled off all the other side, the backing. I, I left the hook and loop together on the wall. And then I lined up my panel along my edges that I was really concerned about here. Um, I wanted these two edges to be my square edge and that's what I was able to square everything up with. So I got those close and then I just started working my way up the wall. I have one main seam here, I have one here and around here, up and around, and then one main one through the middle. So I pressed all this against while holding this out and then I just worked my way up and now I've got a nice, wall that with no screws and I like it um, the velcro again it's not meant to make the wall panel removable it's just considerably less than buying um, double-sided tape and it uh, it gives a solid 1 8 uh, gap um, and I have more confidence in double-sided or in self-adhesive Velcro than I do double-sided tape with uh, metal and wood. Um, but we'll see how it turns out. In the end, if I need to, uh, if Velcro does fail for some reason, this is the first time I've tried doing this, um, if it does fail for some reason, then I will be using some nice, um, whatever, three quarter inch or one, or one inch uh, wood screws with some beauty rings on it to hold everything in place. 
But uh, yeah, we'll see how this is looking tomorrow morning and uh, hopefully this panel stays in place. stapled onto the uh, framework. I still have the double-sided tape on, but I'm going to take that off in a sec. Actually, I'm going to take it off right now. Except when you don't have nails. Fingernails. continue working and probably leave this for the day and see where it's at and then um, yeah I do like it though with the necessity of having the front bench seat come in my bed cannot go past here while it's collapsed so the plan is is the bed's gonna stretch out with the frame that can slide or retract back in or fold over. I'm not quite sure on which way I'm gonna go yet. Um, but it's gotta end there. That's the, if you put a square on it, you put the bench seat back in, put a square on that and bring it up. That's approximately, uh, if I go up 16 inches, that would be my mat or my bed plus my mattress. Um, if I go up 16 inches, it, that's where it hits the back of the seat. So, um, that's what I'm going with. And it works really well. Uh, that line is just in, on this side of the wheel wells and it doesn't extend past the sliding door. So you don't walk into it when you come into the uh, bed. But what I have is I'm gonna have a twin bed and it's gonna go from wall to this line right here. And um, this line and this line are gonna represent the sides of the bottom of the bed. Reason being for that is I'm going to have a, it come across at the same height as the uh, top of the wheel well, but this is going to be, um, I'm not even sure how wide it is, it's about, it's just over two feet, uh, two foot by four foot, we'll call it for now, um, roll out drawer out the back door, um, which yeah, I gotta order the slides for that. Um, that might be at a later date. Um, I might have to build that all out, have the little alcove, and I just stick stuff in it for now. Um, the drawer slides are 250 bucks, so that's kind of not my budget at the moment. Um, same with some of the electrical components. That's a lot of money as well. That's not my budget right now. Um, but anyway, besides that. So this drawer is gonna go out through the back. This line represents a wall that's going to go right up to the ceiling. This drawer is going to go through that wall and then um, the wall will be here and that will be the headboard of my bed basically and the back wall. And this last 16 inches of space in the van is, so above the drawer it's basically going to be a shelf um, to store whatever. Um, I'll work on that later. And then, then 
on this side is going to be my electrical, my heat, it's going to be my maintenance area. Um, I didn't, and then right here is going to be a cabinet, a custom cabinet that I make that will have a drawer. It's going to go from here to the wall, but then it's going to have a heavy weighted drawer on the, or heavy duty drawer on the bottom that can slide out this way in front of the door. Um, and that's going to be a deep one. That might be almost the entire depth of the cabinet. One for water storage or um, just whatever. Um, my ideal is to find a square Culligan jug. I had one at one point. I don't know what I did with it. Um, but if I can find an air square Culligan jug and I found some uh, touch sensitive uh, tops that go on to uh, the jug and I could just have the jug here, roll it out touch the top and uh, pump out some water. It's a battery operated uh, USB rechargeable uh, water pump instead of running electrical or having one of the cheap press down ones. Um, so that's for this square right here. That's where that big drawer of the cabinet's gonna be. Um, the cabinet is, this line also is gonna be part of the uh, maintenance area or the electrical area. It's going to come up and to the same height as the cabinet and then be almost a shelf. It'll cut back into the uh, vertical wall. Um, and what's going to go in here is I'm leaving this space for my batteries. Same with all this space here would be for batteries. And then up here I can have my inverter, my charge controller, um, whatever I need, all my electronics my and everything I need. Um, so that's going to be the general layout. I have it all drawn up on my computer already. Um, and I've laid it all out exactly how I drew it up in the van on the plywood here. And it fits perfectly. Um, it's just a matter of getting to that next step. Um, now that my walls are up, uh, I can start. Uh, and my floor is done, my ceiling's in. Um, some of my electrical's run. I can start actually formulating what's next. And um, I think my next step is gonna be my bed. Everything kind of has to fit around my bed. Um, I did get a lift bed uh, in Kijiji. Um, it's an IKEA twin lift bed. So um, at the head, the head end of the bed stays fixed, but the toe end can lift up. And it's about a two foot um, lift. Now it's all one continuous piece. So. I am either going to make it retractable um, or just make it disconnect where I can just unhook it and sit it on top or I'll put a hinge in it, weld a hinge into it and uh, make it so it folds back onto itself. Even though I have to modify it, um, I can use that frame as uh, for my layout because my bed's not going to be bigger or smaller than that frame is. Um, but it's critical on how I build everything else in this van. There we go. I got a bed. So this is my twin bed that I am going to heavily modify. The only thing I'm going to keep is this frame. The frame that I'm laying on. The metal frame with the wood slots. I did have some other hopes for it. It's got storage underneath. And uh, one of my, again, one of my big considerations or my hurdles with this whole project is I need to be able to put this rear bench seat in um, once in a while so that we can use the van as a family vehicle, an emergency backup vehicle or whatever. Or if we want to go on a road trip without using the, the camping part of it, um, if we just want to go on a day trip somewhere, I still need to be able to put a bench seat back in so that it, we can all go. If I didn't need to do that, this bed, um, I'd reconstruct it because it's made out of particle board, but this bed as it is, I'd cut out the wheel well, slide it in position, and it would be good to go. Um, one reason I picked this bed up um, was uh, this. 
just got a locking hinge. All the way up to there. And it works perfectly in here. Um, I could access all my storage in here, no problem. Um, I was hoping that I could reutilize this mechanism or these hinges and all that to uh, make it so I could access my drawer unit that's under here, but it doesn't seem very feasible. Um, and yeah, so all I'm really left with is this piece here and some hardware for another project. Um, or I might be able to incorporate it somewhere else on the van. Um, but yeah, if anybody else is doing a van conversion and you want easy storage, um, try to track down one of these um, storage beds with these uh, that sits up like this. And then you just push it up one more click and the whole thing comes down. Um, find one of these and retrofit it and make it work for your van because this would be awesome. It'd be really I need to make a couple cuts and I could slide it right in and, and be done. I'd have my storage, my bed and everything just done. Um, but I'm okay with uh, making something out of it. Um, I got myself a good frame and um, something to work with for measurement wise and I'm still really happy I bought this bed. Unfortunately I'm gonna just destroy it. Might uh, keep the fabric, it's velcroed on um, and I might use that and throw it in the washing machine and then cover my other stuff with it. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know yet. I kind of like the idea of having my furniture all wood so we'll see. Um, but yeah, definitely consider something like, I don't know if to call it a hide-a-bed or storage bed or whatever but definitely consider one of these uh, if you're doing your own build. So I stripped the metal frame with the slats off of the uh, the bed frame or the base or whatever you want to call it and I brought in one of the four inch foam mattresses. Everything's from Ikea. I got it all used on Kijiji. It's all in really nice clean shape. i um, going to throw it all through the wash but yeah. Um, I found a box that's the same height as my wheel well. Um, so I just have it that corner sitting on this corner sitting on the box through my mattress on everything lines up um, the way I laid it out on the floor the only thing that doesn't line up is since the van tapers narrower at the back um, that means right here at the, behind these seats is wider than the back doors um, so with my lines squared up on the floor for my cabinetry and all that stuff um, if I square up my mattress with those marks, I end up with a two inch gap over here on this corner because this wall is tapering at an angle back as it gets narrower. Um, I really like it to fit nice and snug against it, but I'm going to see how it, what I can do to kind of make that disappear. Um, whether it's, uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, I might just have my frame moved over tighter to the wall um, and I don't know I'm gonna have to play around with the math on that and see how I can make it work 